welcome back to Articulate with Steve McJones. This week, I got very excited about a little album called Lucifer on the Sofa by one of the greatest rock bands of the century, Spoon. Now, I was so excited about this, uh, I saw that there was another podcast, as there are many out there, uh, called I Turn My Podcast On. A riff on the name I Turn My Camera On, a song by aforementioned band Spoon. This podcast is run by one Mr. Tyler Darling, who was kind enough to come out here, share his beautiful voice, and his journey with Spoon. This is that journey. Okay, Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome uh, Tyler Darling, the most Spoon name I've ever heard in my life, (laughs) to the podcast. Uh, Tyler, uh, yeah, so can you tell us, uh, just right off the bat, a little bit about yourself you know, uh, where you're from, how you got into to music in general, and uh, especially how you got into Spoon. Sure. Yeah. Um, so music in general has just been a thing in my life uh, since I was really young. My parents were both into music, my grandparents. Um, I picked up an instrument myself when I was about 12 with no pressure from my parents. I just, my grandma had a guitar and I always wanted to learn and I just self-taught myself for a couple of years and started self-recording music and writing songs, making little bands in school oh, really? and whatnot over the years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so I've been, I mean, home recording music and messing with music for, uh, I don't know, let's see, 17 years? What do, what do you play? 17 years, we'll say. I play guitar, drums, sing. The only thing I really don't do, a harmonica, I, I play harmonica, sure, that's an instrument. Uh, <laughs> I don't do keys that well. I can kind of mess around, but I don't, I could never play a song, a full song on a keyboard. For recordings, I can play a couple chords and loop it, but, uh, yeah. I yeah gonna, so, I was going to say that disqualifies you from Paper Tiger right off the bat. That kind of stinks. Yeah, yeah, so that's something I could probably figure out. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, so I, I uh, just kind of been around in music for for good, you know. And I don't know how old you are, Steve, but I want to say we're we're around the same age. Are you in your Are you in your mid thirties or late twenties? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm actually twenty three, so we're. Uh... Oh, okay. You're you're younger. Okay, you're younger. Well, okay. So we're about ten years apart. Okay. You, you've heard of NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. You've heard of that little whole boy band thing that was going on. Yeah, of course. Was so, that your your main uh, so, influence? So technically, I guess my first band, uh, I was in uh, elementary school and we were in a, we learned dance moves and I, uh, you know, we were like a little boy band, we lip synced <laughs> music. So <laughs> what got me out of that was, um, just hearing different rock music from like, um, my older uncle and friends and the band Oasis, Oasis really like at that time was pretty popular and they had some guitars and different things. So I started getting into the rock music, but I did have that full transparency little uh that little phase of like mtv super polished pop music that was really famous yeah no i get you i was just gonna say of course uh oasis man i think oasis and spoon for some reason go hand in hand i don't i don't know what it is but uh you know what's the story morning glory it's just there's no other it's, it's just classic you know what I mean? yeah no it's it's a it, that record specifically um you know really got me to be more interested in, in rock music and uh again they're not like heavy rock but kind of the song more songwriting too and uh what i could well, kind of i guess you could say why i picked up the guitar in some ways some other bands too but uh yeah they were big for me in that in that era um well i would say you gotta have a a bridge between uh spoon and the, the backstreet boys you know what i mean so i think oasis <laughs> is a solid uh stepping stone yeah, definitely. Yeah, a couple, a couple stepping stones for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so music is just kind of something that we've been around, and um, I, I got into Spoon though in um, so 2004, 2005, and through a magazine. That's how old I am. I actually read <laughs> magazines, and uh, that talked about music. And this one was a guitar player magazine, and um, I was huge into the Beatles, so. Paul McCartney was on the cover and he was promoting his brand new solo record at the time and um, had that magazine and Spoon had a two, just two pages, a little spread about 
about uh, Gimme Fiction that was coming out. And there was a little interview in there. And that just really sparked my interest. And I kind of like identified with this guy talking about soul and records and music that was really inspiring to him. And so, yeah, I, I got into the band to a magazine interview. I bought the album without hearing any songs. And um, that's how the Spoon fandom started for me. And uh, I really haven't looked back since. Um, I, I lived with that album, Gimme Fiction and Gaga, Gaga, Gaga. Ga, ga. As well as their very first one, Telefono, was a burn CD uh, from a friend. <laughs> I had those for several years, and I didn't like go outside of that and, and buy the other albums until I saw them live, like four years later. Okay, so you saw them. Well, so when you say four years later, four years later from Gimme Fiction, or four years later from God? This has been like two thousand nine. Okay, yeah. so two thousand five is that I bought those that Gimme Fiction, and then when Ga 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 came out, mm-hmm. I bought that as soon as that came out. And right. then, yeah, 2009, I saw them live, and that just, like, refueled the uh, obsessiveness of wanting to get all the albums. So, like, I went backwards and bought all the albums I didn't have, and then I started posting on their message board. Their official message board, which is still there today, it's pretty old school, it's antiquated, but it's messageboard.spoontheband.com. So, at this time, I have over 700 posts on there, easily the most active person on there, <laughs> and, uh... That's kind of how the podcast came to be is um, that website just started dwindling with, you know, Facebook groups and other technology taking off. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I still just kind of like chatting with people about the band and we did a lot of trading tracks and rarities through that website. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I kind of transitioned that into using my big mouth to to talk (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to talk about like uh, nostalgia and, and kind of older times like message boards were they were the OG, you know what I mean? Like they were, um, you know, I'm a I'm a fan of Weezer. Um, so it's like even the band members would hop on the message boards back in the day for things like that. And, and totally. it was, yeah, yeah, much more niche and uh, just really fun to to hop on. They're completely different than like Facebook's or, you know, any other modern message boards or Reddit's or whatever you want to, however you want right. to connect with bands, right? So totally. it's really cool that you got equal, into that. Equally exciting, right? I mean, Rivers Cuomo responded to one of my message board posts. I mean, that was cooler <laughs> than an Instagram live, right? Right. <laughs> But cool, yeah, so you're really, yeah, that, I mean, that is uh, really kind of a, a deep, rich history with Spoon, and um, the thing that I like about Spoon is, like, you know, as opposed to, say, a Weezer or Oasis is, um, you know, they're, I don't want to say it's, like, limited, but they don't they don't just pump out music, you know, every year, right? They oh, yeah. They take time and put time into their albums, which really makes you kind of savor what they, what they put out, right? Absolutely, yeah, and then I funny because i like both those bands and i own i own oasis all their albums and i think i own most weezer ones you know and as you know as a fan of them not everything is fantastic i think the onion had a great article a rivers cuomo trip to sherman williams inspires 17 weezer albums um <laughs> you know like they just put out albums way too many right i mean yeah but uh there's no quality control but yeah spoon absolutely um they have a they have a standard and you know and especially with this new one I try to be you know devil's advocate try to nitpick things and and I you know there are some things but overall every every album is, is pretty good yeah yeah and so this is kind of what I wanted to talk about with you because I heard your your interviews with Brit and it's like you guys get really deep into, I mean, and it sounds like you do this a lot on your podcast, but you get into like the deep, um, you know, musical um, nitty gritty regarding like why the songs are great and why it sounds good. And I mean, that, that comes in with like where the uh, where you can get nitpicky um, with what you do and what you don't like. But I kind of, you yeah. know, I'm not, so I don't have like a deep musical background. You know, I was in choir in seventh and eighth grade. Uh, I, sure. put, yeah, yeah. I play the banjo, you know what I mean? <laughs> and basically what, what, what I like about Spoon is that you don't, you don't have to, to know those things. It's cool to be able to look into how deep it is, but I wanted to get into you more abstract reasons as to why Spoon is so good. Yeah, and I, and I like what you said, because I think that's a big thing about music, uh, like you're saying you don't have a deep musical background, like as far as technically, I think that is some of the possibly 
can be the worst fans of music or the worst. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the, my point is, so like when I'm working on a song, just personally working on something, um, I always ask my wife, who's a big music fan, who got me into a lot of great bands, but she knows nothing about music. And because um, I think you can overcomplicate it or really get into your head about something and, and then you lose sight of like the feeling of and i think that's the most important thing music does is as a human it moves you you know whether it's whatever type of emotion it is mm-hmm. um you know so like your your critiques or your thoughts on the music is is as good and as important as anybody's even if you're a gifted musician right yeah absolutely and and again that's that's what so the reason i bring it up is basically my you know, everybody's heard the underdog, right? Like that was the main thing I think with Spoon yeah. that I, that got everybody into it. But I just remember, yeah. like originally, so my, Lucas, he was my friend, and uh, he is the one of the big. I mean, obviously, follows the podcast and everything, so he's a big nerd about uh, Spoon. And uh, he, he basically, I was, I remember back in high school, me calling like Spoons. What is this band Spoons that you're talking about here? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's the life. That's the life of Spoon Fan lives. Yeah, people making fun of you for liking Sponge or Spoon. <laughs> yep, go on. Yeah, but but then the first one besides the underdog that really he's like you know that's the one you got to show people uh, to be like yeah this is Spoon and he'd be like oh yeah we know that one. But he, the way he introduced them to me, he's like, yeah, it's this band basically that you've heard like most of their songs because they're on every TV show, commercial and movie that you've probably seen. Right. But uh, he, he showed me Don't You Ever. And that song is just amazing, in my opinion. Top tier. Uh, definitely, you know, it comes in with the <laughs> the thing that I really like about Spoon, and you actually mentioned this with Brit, is all the the talking in the mix right so like the at the beginning yeah. of don't you ever they're just like jim can you record this jim jim record the record and they're just like bet and uh and the thing about that the thing about that is another like it, it came in waves with that so we heard it and then i actually got into that song and i listened to it and i was like yo it just keeps going when, even when the music starts and he's like yo i didn't even realize that and at this point, the word, like, the, the slang term bet was like, yo, like, you won't do this. And then be like, all right, bet. And so it was almost like that. But then we also realized, we also realized, I was like, yeah, but what if, what if it's just the beat? That's the first word of the song is like, bet you got it. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know what that little, that part is either. Yeah. I know, um, you know, I know they're, they're talking, that conversation was their recording the talk back of their guy producing with them, Mike McCarthy. And um, my favorite part of that is him singing the guitar line, like the bow, meow, meow. You know, you can hear that. Yeah. They kept that in where he's like singing the riff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So did you hear that whole album or did you just like Lucas played you underdog and don't you have a, or how did that happen? Yeah. So, um, I, I like to consider myself an album person, but it takes a good single for me to get into them sometimes. Sure. Um, so I actually got into don't you ever before I heard the whole album. Um, and then I heard, and then I heard don't make me a target on like, uh, on the radio one time, which is kind of a deep cut now that I have gotten into them. I'm like, wow, I heard that on the radio. That's pretty crazy. You know? Um, mm-hmm. cool station, cool station. It was sure. a really good station. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then I got into Stay Don't Go. That was just another one he kind of brought into my life. Um, mm-hmm. and then at that point, I was like, all right, I like Spoon enough. Let me listen to an album. Which one should I get into? He shows me, um, They Want My Soul. And mm, good, yeah, good choice. Yeah. And then after that point, I was hooked. Like, Inside Out was my favorite song for like the longest amount of time that any song has ever hit for me. And I think, you know, three months, it may not sound like a lot, but like for a song that you could listen to every day and it could give you the chills every day for three months, you know, that's, that's not nothing, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, Lucas is smart. That Ga 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 and They Want My Soul is like the initiation spoon starter pack because they're really good albums they're pretty immediate some of them are grow on you a little bit but they're immediate and they have good songs and um yeah they have you seen them live uh i have not i'm we we're actually planning on seeing them in the uh at the fillmore uh in april i believe oh fantastic well they'll for sure play inside out because that's one of their biggest songs and that one 
you'll like even more once you see it live. They do a really awesome job. I mean, it's not like they change it all up, but I mean, I feel like the tempo is a little bit faster, the energy. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Live. That's my wife's favorite. She she loves that. Song. Nice, and, um, nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one to see live. And and I did I did miss uh, speak. I, I I saw them live, but they opened for uh, Beck and Cage the Elephant originally. Oh, that, on that tour. Okay, yeah. the the night running tour. Yeah, did you see that them at that tour? I didn't get to see it. I was I was supposed to, and um, I had some family things going. On. I mean, I can't remember. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. Well, uh, I did, uh, we were we were going to be out of town for, um, visiting family, but uh, they weren't playing super near me. They were playing in Chicago, and I didn't want to make the trip, but I didn't get to. And yeah, yeah, that was kind of a short set, right? It was kind of like a thirty minute set, and they open or forty minutes maybe, but yeah, it wasn't a full spoon experience. I mean it. It's still cool. You got to see him play for sure. Yeah, but I mean, it definitely like I don't know. That's why I didn't. When you asked me if I'd seen him live, I said no originally, just because it was like a short set <laughs> and everybody was there to yeah. see like Cage and Beck. So it was they were almost just being disrespectful yeah. to Spoo. You know, and I was like, come on, man, like this is Spoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and and I agree. I mean, I like all those bands. That was a that was a great tour. But yeah, you'll enjoy a headlining nighttime, you know, cool venue set. That'll be a good time. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, that's kind of like how I got really into them. Uh, now, a couple of like more abstract things that I love about Spoon, uh, just in general, their like their experimentation, right? And and so this is kind of what I wanted to get in with you, since you know quite a bit about them and, yeah. and about how they've changed over the course of the year. I like how experimental it was with the start of. You know, uh, you know, kill the moonlight with Paper Tiger, and I mean, the way we would get by is a classic single, but you know, stay don't go is on that as well, and that's got a you know a beatbox as a beat. You know what I mean? Like, that's pretty right. cool. Um, yeah. And then into Gimme Fiction, of course, uh, you know, I I turn my uh, I turn my pocket. Wait, no, this is the with the Beast the Dragon adored. So correct. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, like you're saying they. They definitely do that. They have little, like, I agree with you. I, I prefer Paper Tiger. If, if I had to pick one song off the album over, you know, the big single. And, you know, some, sometimes it's hard when you got a big single to to just identify it as a song. Like, sometimes it's just like you've heard it the most. But, no, Paper Tiger is beautiful. And they do, you talk about experimentation. Yeah, that's just some weird sound effects that they they came up with and made a song out of it. And, yeah, that's great. It, yeah. They have fun with it, right? And so what kind of like over the years, um, you know, you get into trans reference and that's a fan favorite, right? That's uh, I think any Spoon, you know, Spoonhead really enjoys trans reference and almost over, again, not to like compare albums, but, you know, I, at least in my opinion, trans reference has a lot more um, draws to me than say they want my soul at this point like it, they want my soul is a good entry so you, point you like that one better you're saying you like that transference better yeah so we call it trans reference is like a is like an inside joke <laughs> no it's all good yeah yeah but i mean at this point are you are you kidding me like especially on the latter half when you got like i saw the light into trouble comes running oh, that's so good yeah that's down so into uh, it was that the side b or the other side uh yeah 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 it, absolutely and um so if you like Spoon, a lot of times you might realize that a lot of the albums are kind of front-loaded. Like the first six or seven are fantastic. Mm. And then maybe, you know, there's always a strong closer, but then you might have a little bit of tracks that aren't the favorite. But I agree, Transference, I like the second side better mm -hmm. uh, than the first side. I love Written in Reverse as a single. Oh my gosh. It's, that's my that's my all-time favorite Brit Daniel vocal performance. It's so raw, it's, not, it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that you're right. That whole second side is so good. Um, mm -hmm. I love the break, and I saw the light. That weird, you know, musical shift that happened. Definitely, I agree. Yeah, it's a growing out. It's an album that grows on you, and I definitely had changing thoughts on it. Um, again, I don't think it's part of that like spoon starter pack. How to get into the band, but once you do, as you sh as you as you've shown, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Once you start to appreciate the little things than the band does, you really like that album. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And and so what I, I guess with the progression of the band is what I want you to elaborate what you think happened on. Uh, basically is, you know, after Transference, getting into They Want My Soul, and then, um, you know, three years later into Hot Thoughts. It seems like they kind of, and, and, and we see this with, 
you know, the recent Lucifer on the sofa as well, uh, how Brit talked about basically, you know, they kind of went into the studio and played a lot more with, you know, studio effects and, and things that they could do, um, you know, that are a little bit more synthetic, right? And then getting into the pandemic, I heard basically Brit uh, and the band at that point had started playing live again and just kind of messing around. Uh, and, and what they used to do is, is play live and, and get songs that way and then record them. Whereas, you know, they kind of got away with that, um, especially with Hot Thoughts, right? They'd go in the studio and record. Right. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So there's only like a couple tracks ever that the band has like played live in a room together. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it sounds live, like one that I found out after interviewing Britt, you mentioned uh, don't make me a target. You know they have that jam part at the end. Yeah, it sounds like it's just like a band jamming live in a room, right? Right. But uh, it's not. It's all piecemeal. You know, one instrument at a time. Really a collage type of record making. They played. Uh, My mathematical mind is all the instruments live in a room. Um, and there there might be a couple others, but yeah, I mean besides the early like first album, they you know it's all studio productions and um. Yeah, this one, they they really got into, well, I don't know, I think not all of them are live recordings, but what they did was they jammed more and they they really got the songs uh, tight and then recorded them versus the opposite of having to record all that Mm -hmm. and then having to learn the song because they didn't know how to to play these songs. They were just pieced together. Um, One of my favorite things reading about Brit um, is it from an interview uh, where he he's talking to his family at the dinner table explaining what the band, he's like, yeah, we're rehearsing for a tour. You know, we, we have to practice and we have to learn these songs. And his, his family's like, what do you mean you have to learn the song? Didn't you play the song? Didn't you record them? <laughs> like, um, and they, they, they didn't understand that. Yeah. They recorded them, but they're all separate parts. And they have not played together as a band. Um, you know, so this new one, they, they really did that. They allowed the songs were, if not, all of them. Maybe they changed a few things, but they really practiced together and rehearsed them and got the songs done before they started the recording process, which was a uh, yeah something they hadn't done in a long time. Right. Yeah, and that's and that's great. Like that's. Uh, I mean, it, I think it really does show on Lucifer and the Sofa too, um, which which I do again want to get into a little bit more later, but. Uh, in the meantime, I guess like uh, just quick, uh, you know, kind of sidebar, uh, like how did you start, uh, you know, coming to contact with interviewing Brit? You know, how did that whole process begin and, and how that play out oh, for you? Sure, yeah. So it's been years in the, in the making. Um, I believe it was 2018. So going back to that antiquated message board, <laughs> the message board had some issues. Uh, it was down. I had written a contact from their website that nobody responded. Um, I don't think I've ever laid this story out, so I'll, I'll try to be quick with it, but mm-hmm. it's kind of funny. Um, I So I direct messaged Brit on Instagram, mm-hmm. and it was, it was a joke. Like, I was being facetious on some of the things I was saying. Like, just so you know, I was kind of poking fun at the website. Like, the, the millions of users on the website can't – um, access their accounts and we can't post and you know and I thought maybe you as the lead singer songwriter you know head of Spoon or something like that you know would like to know this information and I sent them a picture of the of the like website down and mm. I'm like wow that sounded really I was just trying to be a jerk it was just like funny and I'm like he'll probably never respond right you know like that'll never like, uh, and he just said, Oh, Hey, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll, hopefully we can get that going. Yeah. I talked to somebody there. Hopefully have it in a, you know, in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Cheers for, thanks for following the website. And then he asked me, uh, what did he ask me? I think he asked me for my address. Hmm. And, um, I was like, Oh, why were you going to like send me something fun? And, you know, like again, like joking, like you don't need to send me anything. But he's like, "Oh yeah, I would, you know, if you want passes or something to a show, let me know." And um, you know, I appreciate you being a fan, and and you know, because I, I have no official capacity on the on that message board, but I had kind of been fostering the community and just posting, and you know, over the years, so he must have noticed that. And so, um, I, he doesn't send me physical tickets, but the show that we saw him in twenty nineteen. Um, 
he's like, yeah, let me know when you're coming. I'll get you passes. He confirmed like a month before I was coming. And uh, yeah, I, I met him just like walking by seeing another band for just a minute. He was very nice. I would probably said something stupid at the time. I don't know. Like, we just <laughs> talked about music for a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he texted me when I was at the place because he had to send the tickets to my phone because uh, there was a mishap. And um, he said, yeah, they're going to be at Will Call and they weren't there. I called the manager. Britt personally was texting me. He's like, okay, here's the tickets. Let me know when you get in. If you see me, come say hi. So it was just kind of a friendly, like we weren't like chatting or hanging out all the time, but uh, very cordial, very, very nice. And just like appreciative of me being a fan. Yeah. over the years and um so then fast forward a year or two you know i kind of mentioned that i wanted this what to do this project and he's like yeah let me know i'll tweet it and i'll make sure the band tweets it when you put out the podcast so yes. as i'm finishing up my first episode i uh i asked him a couple questions like for clarification and he's like yeah i'll get you those answers no problem um what's the format of the podcast again are you interviewing me or what and i'm like well <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't what I was planning on doing, but is that something you'd want to do? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, sure. Um, he said, yeah, sure, that's no problem. Um, so I started asking questions, and, he's, and I said, Can I, do you want me to send you an advance? Because, I mean, I'm, I have probably years saved of just random spoon stuff and, like, a document somewhere. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, let me know if, if we're going to kind of be all over the place on different albums. I can probably only do an hour so if you want to get in depth on one album, or if you want to talk about multiple albums, nice. So I sent them all the stuff. We set up the time to record. The recording goes well, but only through the first album and EP. And I was like, "Oh, I know you're pressed for time. I'm sorry. Um, you know, we didn't finish this." And like mid conversation, he's like, "Yeah, no, this is fun. This is good. Let's just start doing this. You know, on Monday we'll we'll talk every once in a you know so." It, it kind of turned into, I think he kind of enjoyed just talking because he doesn't really go back in the past and talk about a lot of this stuff. It's really hard to find yeah. online anything about the, about their early stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, I think he kind of enjoyed it. And so he's like, yeah, we'll just start doing this. And this was summer of 2020. The first episode came out. And, um, you know, COVID obviously helps that because they weren't touring or anything to get. So he had extra time. And yeah, we were checking in every week for a lot of that summer and fall of 2020 and we record so i have like 16 hours of <laughs> recorded interviews that i yet to <laughs> release at all because i'm working on the other content but um it's really wild man it's, it's weird you know i didn't plan on it it kind of just happened yeah. and um you know he was excited about it after that first interview management contacted me and they're like we'll get you a free license so you can use all the music you don't have to pay anything for it and um it's just kind of all happened and um nice yeah sorry if that was a long story but yeah that's kind of how it happened well that's pretty cool and, on, and like on a I, I gotta imagine as an artist too at least from what i heard when you were going over um you know some of the older at least uh some of the older albums it sounds like he definitely enjoys you know reminiscing a little bit you know and uh and also you know, kind of things that you point out, uh, you know, were, were you like, was that purposeful? Uh, how much meaning did you, did you put into that? And, and it's funny as a fan, uh, you could tell, uh, like, there's things that I put meaning to when I listen or when I hear, and it's like, oh yeah, he did that for sure. Like on purpose, you, you know, that was definitely, uh, the reason behind that. And then you talk to him and then he's just like, yeah, I mean, if that's what you think happened, then maybe. You know? Yeah, and see, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I and I and I always try to I try to shy away. Sometimes I'll ask those questions, but I try to keep it a little bit um, mysterious. I never try to ask lyrics are where I always try to steer away from. And I think on the new one, I did ask a couple of lyric questions, but you know, I never wanted to get the exact ter- interpretation because. Uh, you know, the fan interpretation or, or the emotional connection you do have to a song can be easily ruined if you find out this reason for something and you're like, oh, I thought this person was a genius and now they're, it was an accident. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I, and, and there's nothing that I've found out about Spoon that's made me feel that way. But, right. you know, I, like you're saying, there's always that, that balance that I try to keep is, you know, I never want to like, ruin anybody's experience with a 
song or something that means something to them, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one thing that I've noticed with Spoon, and this is kind of um, real quick, like with the Arctic Monkeys, it's it's a little different, but basically with Spoon, it seems like they're almost just going for the aesthetics of the words and not so much the meaning, you know what I mean? It's kind of more of like they want – and of course, there is meaning in some of them, and, and you're allowed sure. to, you know you're yeah. allowed to put the meaning yep. there. But it, it sounds like it's mostly just for the the pleasure of the listener. They're like we're gonna throw these words together and, because they sound good to this music, you know. And uh, that's actually yeah. definitely one thing that I noticed. Like getting into them is a lot of the times, especially like you, I mean, you ask anybody underdog, you, you know, they're gonna know the trumpets right off the bat, right? But if you ask them to right. quote any like lyrics from that, they're gonna be like, I don't, I have no idea, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so, yeah. you know, I think that's very, uh, you find that a lot with Spoon, uh, is that like the the lyrics are more there as another instrument in a way, if you ask me, as another creative outlet, yeah, of no. course. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a ton of songs that do that. I think there are some really deep personal songs. Um, and then I think they're kind of intertwined with certain things. So like, for instance, are you familiar with the band's cassette? Uh, I am not. Uh, a series of sneaks. It's like their second album, so you might not be. Okay, yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, those early ones I've listened to like just once or twice, you know, going through. But yeah, not, you know, totally not familiar fair. with that's everything. No problem. But my, my, my point was, um, cause I have always loved that song and musically it sounds really emotional, mm -hmm. but lyrically it sounds like he wanted to be more expressive and then he kind of like changed it. And he, he admitted that like in that episode that he, he felt it was too personal or like too at that time in his life, like he didn't want to expose these feelings or these thoughts. So he kind of like changed it to just be really generic. Um, you know, and I think later on, on the other records, they kind of get more emotional uh, with lyrics. But I definitely agree. You know, there's there's a lot of songs that are just talking about some weird stuff, like the, the map room and, uh, <laughs> you know, a bunch of different Plutorians, all kinds of these references that took things that... that it's, it's not Bob Dylan, let's put it that way. It's <laughs> just all about the lyrics and it has three chords in the whole song. Yeah, definitely. One thing I did want to bring up with you is... Uh, what we talk about a lot, a lot of the time is, uh, what do you think about the accent that Brit sings in sometimes? You know, it's almost like a. <laughs> when I first heard them, I was like, is this a, a British band that I'm listening to? But yeah. it's like, uh, he's from Austin, Texas, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Where's the Southern Drawl? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really, it's fun. It, it, it makes, you know, he's just like, a, uh, even in, what is it, in They Want My Soul, like Lambs of Slaughter, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I have a good friend who's into, he's he traded music over the years, and um, that was the first thing he didn't like about the early records, is he, later on, I think Brooke kind of finds his voice, I mean, he might have a, a singing accent or whatnot, but those early ones, you can, he really has a thicker faux British accent, and that was something that he noticed, and I, I got, he didn't like that early stuff because of that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I just think it comes from his inspiration of the, the band, you know, he's into a lot of British bands and, mm -hmm. uh, the Kinks, the Cure, different, you know, the Beatles, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't like the Beatles, right. but, um, you know, and that can be, you could change it up. There's a lot of British singers will, would sing in American accents because they were influenced by American music, you yeah. know, so yeah, it makes sense. yeah, it's interesting. It stands out for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, and, and so uh, another thing that I did want to cover is just kind of what your your thoughts are over the years of like, not all bands do a lot of covers, but Swoon seems to have a, you know, a, an affinity to to try and, you know, make, I think you said on, on one podcast, you're like the, uh, the perfect Spoon formula is, uh, is one, one cover and, and the rest and a beautiful closer or something like that. Yeah, well, that was off the newest one uh, for Lucifer. Be the reason I say that is because, um, you know, this one has it. Mm -hmm. They Want My Soul uh, has that cover, I Just Don't Understand. And then um, Don't You Ever is a cover. Did you know that Don't You Ever was a cover? Yeah, yeah, I did because uh, I was reading about it and they said uh, the original band was like, yeah, Spoon's album is just more sexy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Or Sp yeah, Spoon's version, right, right? And you know, it wasn't that song wasn't a hit. It was a band, and I actually interviewed them, 
And um, oh, I guess I, I guess I can say it. It's been in the can for a while, but I haven't talked about it. But so I interviewed them because the, one of the guys wrote a book about um, the experience of that band that wrote that song because they they toured with Spoon, they opened for Spoon, and as like an anniversary type uh, bonus content for when we get into Ga 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 Ga. Uh, I got to chat with them. Um, oh, nice! What so uh, what band is that? Uh, the band was The Natural History. Okay. So it was two, two brothers, two brothers and, a, and then there was a drummer. It's called so the Tepper Brothers. Their 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 father is famous for a, a song in Rocky IV, and um, you know their band. I, they're a New York band that was really popular during the. I mean, The Strokes and Interpol around that time. So if you like either of those bands, yeah, Inter- you should check them out. They have they have two albums and an EP. But, um, sorry, that got off track, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what the Don't You Have is a cover. My point was just that, like I said, those two albums, I think, are the most immediate, like, a starting point, if you like Spoon, mm-hmm. and obviously Hell, the track one on the new record is a cover. Oh, so, so uh, it, 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 there's something to it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, that's a good formula, I, and I, and I do like, uh. I'm trying to think of any other. Um, they've done covers on EPs and did singles. Yeah. But, um, um, they're Tom Petty the covers. Cover. The Tom Petty covers are um, so good. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah, they released that as a single during the COVID. Uh, right, the, the double Tom Petty song. Uh, um, the Christmas as far song. As being on albums, I think there's those three, and then um, there is on their very first record. There was another local Austinite. They covered the song, but they didn't write it. So yeah, I guess that's technically a cover. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Those three albums are pretty solid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just, uh, it's just fun to see, you know, again, I think it, it kind of goes along with the, you know, wanting the band to have fun, right? And the band, bands that I listen to, at least, it sounds like that when they're having fun, you're going to have a good time, right? And so, you know, covering a song, it's, it's, I think it's a, you know, when you're jamming with your friends and you're playing music, you're mostly covering music, right? Like you're covering other songs or it's, it's fun to do other. So, so like I recently have been watching that Beatles documentary on uh, Disney plus and, and there's a whole portion where they just go through and play like, you know, Elvis and like Bob Dylan. And, and, you know, it seems like for them, it's almost like refreshing. Uh, and, and it may be the totally. same with, with yeah. spoon to, to just totally. kind of play somebody else's music. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, the first four Beatles records were seven of the tracks were covers and seven were originals. You know, I mean they and then even later there were many covers they did and I, that was just a thing back then, you right. know. And it I don't know if it was where that changed to where it's like, you know, we're we're great musicians. We don't need to cover other bands. And I don't I don't think that was like, you know, that might have been the thought behind why bands didn't want to do it, but um you know, if you do, if, I think all Spoon's cover, they did something their own with it. It wasn't like just a carbon copy. It was a right. little Teal album <coughs> mm. by Weezer. Um, <laughs> you know, so I think, I think that's fun. Yeah. And like you're saying, when you're, when you're getting into music, that's all you do. You might write a riff or write a song, but first thing you're going to do is learn your favorite songs. And right. uh, there is that, there is that just fun and joy of, of playing music that you love. And, and then I know like for me personally, when I did covers and when I've done them over the years with my, you know, playing myself or the band, I'm always like, Oh, this will be cool. Cause maybe these people haven't heard this song and this will get them into that band, you know? Mm. And they'll be like, Oh, that's interesting. I want to check out that. So you're kind of almost letting, sharing your playlist or sharing your, you know, your music taste too, by doing that. And, uh, yeah. That's always fun. Yeah, absolutely. Which is uh, it's just it's so much fun. So uh, I guess kind of moving forward into uh, we can get to a Lucifer on the sofa, man. Oh my gosh, dude! All right, <laughs> it's all right. it's been so long, and the wait, oh, it's just I, I think it lived up to everything five, that I wanted. Five years, <sighs> man! I cannot believe it. I cannot. And uh, so, how did you on your initial listen? Uh, how did you feel about it? Yeah, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I got to hear it a couple weeks early because of being able to record. Um, oh, podcast, Mr. Even, uh, podcast guy over here gets to listen to the music. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, I mean, again, that that wasn't um, I. So I kind of I still it's changed over those first few weeks after recording. It's growing a lot um, as far as. So first reaction, uh, I loved I loved a lot of it. Um 
I've changed. So my first reaction, like the closing track, I wasn't into that much at first. I was kind of like, this is, you know, and it, it's not super experimental. Like it, it's not Ghost of You Lingers or Paper Tiger. Like, you know, it just was like, this is all it is. Like, I don't know. Um, a couple other ones. I'm trying to think. Um, My Babe, I was like, ah, I don't know. Mm. It's just kind of a... But yeah, so like, grown and, go ahead. yeah, I was just gonna say like when the the singles came out, right? So like hardest cut. First time I heard that, I just fell in love. You know what I mean? It that's got me yeah, so that's, hyped. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. And then and then wild. Can we just talk about how good wild is for a minute? That song is so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Very really good. You're really that's gonna make me good. fall in love in a song and then and then cut it off at three minutes, dude. Oh my gosh! Like. And so, yeah, like my expectations almost, were were very high. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say my expectations with those two were very high. And then my babe came out, like, and, and like you were saying, you know, compared to the other singles, it's like, you know, it's another spoon song. You know what I mean? It just it, it definitely fits into their discography for sure. Um, but it didn't seem like it was in the same vein as as the other singles that had been released. Yeah, I mean, what I'll say about that is. Uh, so I think it's a beautiful, just really simple, straightforward love song. And mm-hmm. to be honest, Spoon has never done that before. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, the, I mean the most like love songs you could you could maybe equate would be like Anything You Want and um, I Summon You. I mm-hmm. both love both those songs. But again, those are both from a point of like. I miss you, I take me back, I, or I'm, I miss you, I'm longing for you, you're so far away from me. Um, this is just like, I'm in a good place, or in love, I love you, everything's great. So like, I like it from that, because first of all, they've never done that, and it's, I don't know, speaking of the Beatles, I always kind of think of it just like a McCartney love song, right? Like, Paul McCartney has many just, I love you, you love me, mm-hmm. life is good. Um, and some people criticize them for that but some people love that you mm-hmm. know so it's um i do yeah and so i guess my, my first reaction on it was like i don't know it's just kind of maybe cookie cutter i like the instrumentation but it's grown on me too and i really like how my favorite thing is how the song starts really mellow and then you get that big build by the end and it right kind of ends the first side of the record um yeah. So yeah, I think it works. Well, and and I like agree. It's just kind of a grower for me. Yeah, and I agree. Like since you know, initial reaction versus now is so different because I've listened to it probably like maybe like four or five times at this point. Um, yeah. All the way through, and and my babe is slowly becoming one of my favorites, uh, for sure. And then you know, and, I mean, even so, once I heard that Held was going to be on the album, I tried to get into the initial song, which is really good, like the original version. Same. I, did, I did the exact same thing because I wasn't before they re- announced like the track listing what it was. I I wasn't familiar with it. Right, but you know, the, once I got into it, I was like, "Wow, this is a great song." I'm curious as to what they're going to do with it, and then to use <laughs> that as the opener and what they actually did with it, though, like that was oh yeah, so good, so good. Yeah, it's very good. So the guitars just get super loud, and that the drum break is so good. The you know drum fills get so loud. That's yeah, it's very cool. Absolutely, and and so I, I guess another thing re- regarding abstract, I feel like like you had mentioned earlier, you know, the first side of things uh, at the beginning, it is kind of front loaded. I would say. Um, but I think the second side is really going to be the grower. Um, like you said with Lucifer on the sofa, I can already tell I'm like, wow, this is, there's a lot more there than I had initially thought. And, and same with on the radio. I think that's a jam. Uh, and even, I love that one. yeah, that was one of the ones that, that stood out to me initially, but I can, I can already tell it's going to keep growing for me. So yeah, I don't know that I, I'm just curious as to what, like how it's going to be, uh, you know how it's changed already and how it's going to continue to change and i think that's one of the greatest marks of an album is the the dynamic yeah, ab- to it. absolutely yeah and, and that's why i didn't do my normal uh formula for an episode because usually i will so the first half is me um you know breaking down the songs why i think they're good i mean it's not a review first of all the podcast it isn't going to appeal to someone that doesn't like the band so <laughs> i'm not trying to like review it saying this is great I'm trying to say, like, this is my opinion as someone that enjoys music, as someone that enjoys this band, and maybe um, 
so you didn't notice. And that's, I mean, that's my favorite comments that I get that people will say, oh man, I really like this song, but because you said this, it made me appreciate this part and I like it more. You know, that was kind of always the goal. So I'm not like reviewing it saying, um, <laughs> cause I like it all. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting because all the other episodes, the albums have been out for years. So I've listened to these a ton. I've broken things down. I've written notes. Um, and on this one, you know, I only had for a couple of weeks. So I'm like, I'm not going to be able to actually justify breaking down what makes this song great. Cause I just don't, I, you know, you got to live, like you're saying, you got to live with you and grow. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I think like off the bat, I liked it. But again, every, every time I re-listen and hear different things, I like it more. Mm-hmm. And, um, I am, you know, some years, down, <laughs> probably a year, at least down the road when I get to this album, cause now we're at, give me fiction as far as chronologically. Um, yeah, I probably will break down the songs a little bit because they're going to change over time. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, you should do that. I think that'd be fun. You know, even, you know, down the line, re-reviewing it and being like, wow, I can't even believe I missed this before, you know? like Yeah, <laughs> yeah what an idiot I was. <laughs> February 2022. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, one thing I didn't even realize, I mean, obviously with Hell, the, I think the bluesy aspect to it uh, was very prominent, but I didn't really catch that on the rest of the album until you, you know, I heard you guys talking about that and breaking, you know, some of the riffs down. And yeah, I, I definitely am excited to to see how it grows uh you know moving forward so i definitely uh, another i think classic <laughs> what do you think about uh what do you think about spoon just coming out with a the greatest hits album and just coming out with a single and just throwing that they're like yeah no bullets spent instant greatest hit here you go take that <laughs> yeah well so an- another nerdy thing i did was when i got the album i took that song and and thought about it as one because mark rankin who produced this album um Besides the last track, uh, the Fridman, Dave Fridman, who were produced the last, they want my soul and hot thoughts produced that one. Mm-hmm. But, um, so I thought, would that have worked with this new album? I thought about it just for fun. You know, I'm thinking of a sequence, mm-hmm. same producer, the same kind of mind frame they were at. Um, and, um, uh, I'm sure it could have, but I, but I think this album with these 10 tracks really works. But yeah, no, I think that's a great song. Do you like that song? Oh, love- it's one of my... I, I think that was well done. Like, the fact that, they again, they just throw, like, instant classic, it's on our greatest hits yeah. single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Like, especially after that, you know, temporary, not, not hiatus, but, you know, um, not having any music for a while, they come out with the greatest hits in a single, and the single just... It, I mean, everything hits at once, you know what I mean? <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah well, so that would have been on the tour, right? That mm-hmm. would have, in 2019, you probably saw them when that came out. So mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw that remember these dates. So 2017 was Hot Thoughts, so 2019 was The Greatest Hits, and yeah, they were on tour uh, with Beck and Cage when that all came out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just, I, I really do, that was, again, uh, one of the songs that really, I was still... Um, kind of just getting into him. I had been into him for a little bit, but I, I hadn't been waiting sure. for two years since Hot Thoughts, you know what I mean? Um, right. And, and you know, yeah. having that new single immediately as I was, like, just starting to settle in with the band was like, wow, okay, I can see what direction we're kind of going. And it's much better than, say, like, a Weezer direction, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it's... Like, I think the band... You know, it's it's got me excited more, especially again with no bullet spence for sure, but especially with this album and the directions that they took with the single and 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 kind of how the album turned out as a whole. You know, it, it's got me excited. <laughs> it's funny when when you had Brit on again. It's like ten albums. What do you think about that? And he's like, Yeah, I think it's a good place to stop. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, that, yeah, that was funny. That was like his opening line, and I'm like, Oh great, like this is gonna be. <laughs> the yeah. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure almost positive he was joking, but um, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was funny. <laughs> uh, it was funny, and and so like it's kind of just, of course, I you know it was, probably was a joke, but you know I, I think it would be a cool place to you know stop the discography, but looking forward as they continue on, if they do continue to make music, which I'm sure they will, like you said. I'm really, really excited to see that the direction that they continue on. Yeah, with. 
Well, you're on, you're full on board now, so now you'll have to wait like all of us until <laughs> 2027 uh, for the next spoon record, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're you're going to be on board now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, you know, as far as the future. I mean, that's what's always been fun about them is you kind of said that earlier, too. That they're always trying to change. I mean, and I think, he, and a lot of bands do this, is their, their album that comes next is kind of a reaction to that previous one, right? Mm-hmm. Like, ga 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 is a super slick, awesome produced record. Transference is self-produced, and they leave in demos, and it's an ugly record. I mean, mm-hmm. not that it's bad, I love it, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. So then, then They Want My Soul, you kind of get into a weird production, but then they really liked Inside Out, and that more electronic-ishness uh, of the album, mm-hmm. and then Hot Thoughts, that's what the whole album is. And then this <laughs> album, pure rock and roll we're not doing electronic anymore you know <laughs> so they're they're always kind of going to be changing and so that's yeah like you're saying you're not going to get a cookie cutter spoon album like a weezer that uses an excel spreadsheet to, <laughs> to plan out a song you know right man we're hating a lot of weezer i don't mean to do that because i i do like a lot of their music and, uh, they're just easy to hate on you know? it's a familiar reference point that they you know, no band's perfect. They have their flaws, but yeah. I don't. I don't hate them, and I enjoy them. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, excited. Definitely excited to see where uh, after this one. I mean, probably should not already, as the new album just came out like two, like last. Yeah, movie. you're such a man. You just let them enjoy this. Let them <laughs> enjoy the tour. Like, where's this new album? Yeah, guys. <laughs> five days. Yeah. Where's the new one? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I know, I'm, I'm trying to get better about I'm that, but yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so really interested. I, I think um, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, you know, we've been recording for a bit now. But yeah, I, I, it was definitely a good conversation, good talking to you about, uh, you know, just the, yeah, the the entirety of the whole, yeah. the, the, the fandom of the spoon. Um, and so, yeah, so, um, you know, is there anything, I mean, obviously you want to plug your podcast and, uh, you know, tell people where they can find it, how they can find you on social media, things like that. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. The podcast is available on every uh, Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, the Audible, Google Podcasts, <laughs> uh, SoundCloud is where it's hosted. So if you listen there, it doesn't change a thing. That's where the RSS feed is hosted for you podcast nerds um, like myself. Uh, but yeah, listen anywhere. Uh, share it with your friends who like music, who like Spoon. Um, the Instagram and Twitter are, will post things when new episodes come out and things related to the podcast or the band. Instagram is at I turn my podcast on and then Twitter at turn my podcast on Noah I because of character limit. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, I, it was fun. I, you know, as we chat and you like the band, I think you'll like some of the older stuff too. I, Maybe not the first one, if you like, but uh, a series of sneaks is a great one, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a it's kind of their last straightforward rock and roll record up until this newest one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, maybe you'll like that one. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I mean, I've I've gone through the entire discography, you know, a few times, and, and kind of stuck with the ones that stood out. But I, you know, I of course need to get more into you know. I've heard like I've met a lot of people that say they're really into those first. Uh, two or three albums and and you know yeah. it, it just it's probably like any other any of their other albums where it just you know it takes a couple listens to really appreciate you know totally yeah, yeah. And, and you'll you know there's things to enjoy about all of them and i really do um yeah girls can tell their third one you know they're all mm-hmm. you'll enjoy it all but now yeah now you're on board and now you're you're stuck with us <laughs> waiting for for a new record now absolutely all right man well yeah definitely good talking i know you're a popular guy around these parts so you got a couple of things that <laughs> you gotta do here, so. oh yeah totally <laughs> yeah, totally no man I, I appreciate thanks for inviting me and uh yeah nice chat with you cool man all right have a good one thanks so much all right yeah take care Steve. bye what a good podcast episode about spoon the band, the myth, the legend. We love Spoon. You gotta check out this new album. If you don't, what are you doing with your life? Really, what are you doing? If you're not checking out this guy's podcast, what are you doing? Please, I beg you, 
feel the emotions that this album made me feel. Explore your music taste. It's experimental, it's different, it's fun, it's rock, it's soul, it's everything you'll ever need in your life. So please, check out this podcast, check out this album, follow Spoon, and 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 have a good week. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Amen. Okay, bye. Hello? Steve McJohn? <laughs> is this uh, Tyler from I Turn My Podcast On? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, it is. Oh, hey. 